Be so kind to stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. I'm going to take you for, to a passage of scripture in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 7. I'll try to do this without singing. Amen. If you've not noticed, and I meant to bring up one up with me, we have come up with some outreach cards back there on the, uh, the table. So if you want to take you some, we've got plenty in my office. Take you some to put in your card, put in your, your uh, coat pocket or your purse. You go out to eat today. You can hand one to your waitress. Praise the Lord. Just simply says, are you searching for peace? Are you wanting to know God? You can do that. And you turn the card over and it's our church, picture of our church, and then it gives this very passage of Scripture in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 through 13. Seeking the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so this is possibly, I don't know, the Lord's changed it on me several times since that's come out. But this is the inspiration that is behind that card. And so I thought I'd uh, just allow the Lord, so I'm going to step out of the way and allow God to minister to us because there's people that are searching and looking, wanting to know, are you looking for peace? Searching for peace. Is there something to this God thing? Wanting to know God. Sometimes you got to do generalities because not everybody understands who Jesus really is. They've got mixed emotions and ideas and thoughts. Some think he's just a man. They don't understand that he is the author and the finish of our, our faith. He is the mighty God. But if we can just allow them to know that he is the God of peace, and certainly in the world today there's many that are searching for peace. Praise the Lord. I'm going to uh, read to you Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7, and it says, The prophet writes, And seek the peace of the city where whether I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace next few moments I want to bring to your hearing with the help of the Lord captives in peace captives in peace Lord I pray that you would move upon my heart and my mind here today that I might be able to deliver this soul unto this body Lord that you would move upon us Lord Allow your anointing to flow, Lord. Allow your inspiration and unction to go forth, Lord. I pray that you would minister to us in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The Dalai Lama would speak of peace and he would quote, do not let the behavior of others destroy your inner peace. Ralph Emerson would write, nobody can bring you peace but yourself. Norman Vincent Peale would say, the life of inner peace, being harmonious and without stress, is the easiest type of existence. I would agree with that. If there was some way we can live in harmony and not have any stress, that would be the excellent way of living right, life, wouldn't it? But we are captive in this world, and so stress is part of our life, and so we can't live in an existence of stress-free life. But we know one that can allow us to live in such a way. Hallelujah. Uh, Baba, Baz, uh, Baba Haradaz would say, don't search for anything except peace. Try to calm the mind. Everything else will come on its own. You ever been in that situation in your life where you're trying to find that peace, searching for that answer, longing to hear, longing to, to feel at peace again, but yet your mind is a, a, a carefree, just stuck out there, and, and all you can hear from those around you say, just calm a little bit, just, just take it at ease. And sometimes taking the advice of those that are in stressful situations themselves is not always the best thing to do. But could I remind you here today that we are a worshiper of one who made all of life, that created everything and knows exactly. In fact, I would say that he even created the stress that we're living in. Well, how would you say, why would you say that? Like something like that, Brother Roma. Because we all go on a search. We all go on looking for something. 
In fact, Jesus would tell us in Matthew chapter 13, uh, th uh, verse 30, uh, 44 through 46, there, there was those that would come to him. He would give the parable of the hidden treasure. He said there was a man that was searching for the hidden treasure. And he come across the field and he began to dig in this field just searching. There, there's no uh, backstory of telling us how he knew that field had a treasure in it. It just says that he was searching. So we can go and learn that he was really looking. He sold everything out. He had to find what he was looking for. Could I tell you that there are people, even myself, uh, that just are searching for that longingness, that, that peace that passeth all understanding, that they'll sell everything to go and find it. They'll do whatever it takes to find that peace in the midst of their storm or whatever it is facing. And so Jesus says, and once he found that hidden treasure, he found it, he left it there and went back and sold all of his possessions. And he bought that parcel of ground. Why? So he could have that hidden treasure. It didn't matter what it was. We don't know what type of treasure it was. Only that Jesus likened it to heaven. Could I tell you that heaven is my greatest prize? That's the longing that I have. That's the desire that I have. And I've got to have a, a thought in my mind that it's not going to take anything in this world that's going to take my heaven from me. I found the hidden treasure, and I'm going to make it to heaven's shores one day. Jesus would go to the next parable, and he would begin to describe a gentleman that was a, a, a gentleman that liked to look for the pearls. And he, he would find all types of pearls. He would go and search for the pearl. But what he was looking for was that pearl that, that was of great price. He was looking for the pearls of all pearls. And Jesus says once he found that pearl, he, he sold all of his possessions to obtain that pearl. He had to have that pearl of great price. I wonder where is the peace that you're so desiring? Where, where is it that you're, what is it that you're searching? The hidden treasure, the pearl that you're looking for. Are you willing to go and gravitate to it and desire it so much that it will be yours as you claim it? I wonder if the Lord would be such a treasure to you. I wonder if the Lord would be such a place that you can go to him and cling to him and say, God, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. There's nothing that will come against me and you. I've made up my mind. I've made a decision to live because you are the treasure that I'm looking for. You are the peace that passeth all understanding. In fact, the rich young ruler in Matthew chapter 19, I, I, I thought it ironic as Jesus began to talk to him, and, the, and it just simply comes, behold, there come a rich man, a man of wealth, a substance coming and looking and said, Master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? There was something that was lacking in his life, something that was missing. And so Jesus, in generalities, knowing the thoughts of, his, of, of who was coming with him, had said, Oh, do the commandments. And then that, that man said, which? Which commandments? And Jesus begins to list all the commandments. And this young man says, no, 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 Lord. I, I have done all that. I, I have done that. I've done from the very beginning. I've done all of your commandments. I've done everything. But what am I lacking? Lord, what am I lacking? Because somehow something is slipping my grip that I can't just get, get my fingers around. I, I'm searching for something. I'm longing for something that's that eternal value, eternal life, something that will never escape me. How can I have it? And Jesus looked at the rich young ruler because he had many possessions, and he said, sell all that you have and follow me. Of course, the story would go as the gentleman looked at Jesus and nodded his head and turned aside because he had great possessions. You know, sometimes great possessions will weigh you down for the things, that, that hidden treasure that you are to find. I don't want great possessions. All I want is to have Jesus in my life. As we begin to look at our scripture text, I must uh, read to you a little bit uh, about what Jeremiah was giving to the uh, children of Israel at the time. He began to tell them, I know you, I want you to understand that God wants you to go into the land of Babylon. 
And he doesn't want you to be desolate. He doesn't want you to be downtrodden. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to uh, be uh, uh, lowly and meek. And, no, he wants you to go into Babylon, live the life. Build houses and homes. Make a career. Do, do the living thing in Babylon. Yeah, yeah, you're captive, but he wants you to search for those things in there. There's a purpose be because God had to design that, that he wanted his people to follow after him. In fact, when you begin to read in verse 4, it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Jeremiah was telling the people of Israel, of Israel unto all that are carried away, the captives whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build ye the houses. Dwell in them, plant the gardens, and eat of the fruit therein. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters. Take the wives for your sons, give your daughters husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may increase there and not be diminished. Don't, don't go into captivity thinking this is the end road, that you're going to live in a prison cell. I, hey, could I tell you here today that the Lord wants you to build houses. He wants you to live over abundant lives. He wants you to have sons and daughters. He wants you to have a life worth living. He wants you to live through Him throughout this world. He don't want you to be dis diminished. He wants you to be built up. And although that you may think that things are going awry for you and the answer is not quite in the mailbox yet, could I tell you here today that the very words of God says, live an overcoming life in the presence of your enemy because I've given you that. I've given you that opportunity. Don't be burdened down. Don't be heavy laden. Oh, no wonder Paul said, lay aside the weights. Don't let those things beset you because you can live an overcoming life. Could I tell you here today, Lay those wastes aside. Don't worry about it. Take the words that God has given to you and build the houses. Build the lands. Bear the fruit. Allow God to give the increase because he wants to bless you. Could I tell you here today that in the land of captivity, there is a peace to have. There is a God to worship. There is a God to praise. The whole point of the Lord giving his people this type of word is he wanted them to realize and understand what your past had. You see, you had everything before you. I've already brought you out of Egypt. land. You was in the land. You was in Canaan's land. You was the land of blessed people. I always moved. Even when you offered filthy sacrifices unto me, I still allowed you to win battles. I still walked before you. Even in the midst of the, the hardships that you brought up, and the you're living through the consequences of your own life, I still was there. This is only to bring you out of what you brought upon yourself. Although you may be living in the tyranny of the enemy, captive in Babylon, but I want you to know there's still a peace to be had there. There's still a joy to be had there. Could I tell you, saints of God, we may be living in a world that's stinking. We may be living in a world that's perverse and mixed up in their thoughts and the ideology. But could I tell you here today, we still have a peace in our heart. We still have a peace in our lives. We can still live an overcoming life, an uplifting life. Praise the Lord. But then verse 11 comes along. And God begins to talk to them again, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. And there's that word again, thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. In verse 7, he says, I want you to seek peace in the city that I send you. I want you to seek the things that you didn't even think was there. In the midst of where you're at right now, you may have never thought to look for the peace of God in the midst of that storm. As the disciples was there and, and they was tossed to and fro and the wind was, guess who was on board with them? They didn't even think to go down in the bowels of the ship and begin to pour their heart out to the Lord. But yet Peacemaker was on the ship with them. Could I tell you here today, in the midst of captivity, in a land that's telling you everything else but that there is a God, in a land and everybody telling you that, that he is unworthy to serve, that he's a fake God, that he can't answer, that there's no healing, could I tell you, if you just rebuke it in the name of Jesus and 
begin to seek peace. Could I tell you when the adversary begins to rise up, something grand is about to happen. Hallelujah. Something good is about to happen. There's something in the air as the adversary gets worried about what's happening in his captive land, about his prisoners that he thinks he's got a hold of. Could I tell you that Jesus come to set the captive free and allow them to have the peace and the liberty and the joy that they so desire. And you can have that today. You can have that, saints of God. You don't have to be diminished. You don't have to be demoralized. You don't have to live in a state of depression. You don't have to be oppressed by the adversary. But you can seek peace in the midst of the shadows of death. You can seek peace in the midst of, of your turmoil. And God will allow you to grant that peace to you. He will give that peace to you. Because the Lord said, I know you, and I think thoughts towards you. I know what's on your mind, and I've got thoughts of peace. Oh, I don't know about you, when God begins to think that he's got peace, I'm in the hands of the Lord. Oh, I, I think I'm just going to worship the Lord. I'm going to magnify the Lord. I'm going to lift him up because he's worthy to be praised. And then, then it doesn't stop there because once we find that peace, once we find out where that's at, just, just that echoing call that I've given you today, there's, there's something that the Lord wants us to do. He, he wants his people to understand. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search for me with your whole heart, you're going to find me. That's where I'm going to be. This isn't in, the, in heaven. This isn't living victorious. This, this isn't living an overcoming life. No, this is in your life. This is right where you're at. When you're facing the darkness of your life, when you're facing the rugged boss, when you're facing those that are ridiculing you and, and br browbeating you and beating you down and, and trying to drag you down to that, that uh, lust and the lies of their lives, that's where God says, I can have peace. I've got thoughts on you, and I know exactly where you're at, and I've got peace on my mind. Oh, little child. If you're searching for me, would you just seek for me? Would you just begin to pray and worship me? Because in the moment that you begin to seek me with your whole heart, I will hearken unto you and I will give you peace. I will restore your heart. I will move upon you. I will bless you. Hallelujah. You don't want to know how important the word of Jeremiah at this time was? It was so important that as Daniel began to live his life, in Daniel chapter 9, we begin to give the uh, account uh, where Daniel began to look back upon the past of what was going on. And he began to take the very word of Jeremiah. And from the very word of Jeremiah, he begins to have this vision of the 70 weeks, the end time hour. That's how important it is that we realize who God was really talking to. I know he's talking to Israel, but today we can bring it out of the book of Jeremiah and apply it to our lives and really understand if we really truly seek after the Lord, if we truly want to find him, he's there for us. He's wanting and longing to bestow upon us the peace that passeth all understanding. I wonder if you close your eyes here today how many of you live in a life right now and you need some peace could I tell you lift your hands unto the Lord right now. If you need peace of heart, peace of mind, peace in your body, peace on the job peace in your life I want you to lift your hands because God has a thought towards you the Lord has a thought towards you and it is peace. Could I ask you here today while you're in the land of captivity. Do you think God is a God of peace while you're living in a land of captivity? Do you still believe God can answer your prayer? Oh, if you would just seek after me, if you would just long after me, if you would just desire after me, I will hearken unto you. I will be there for you. I will guide you. I will love you. But sometimes in our lives, those will be like the rich young ruler. No, I can't. I've 
going to pay off. I, I think I'm just going to keep my possessions that I have. I don't want any earthly possessions that is going to hold me back from the promise of a hidden treasure of the pearl great price. There's, there's something to be said about peace of mind. You want to know why drug addictions run running rampant? Because individuals are looking for a way to soothe their mind and their heart. You want to know why they're looking to the alcohol? Because they're wanting to soothe the mind of their heart. They're looking for a liberation somewhere. Could I tell you, in the midst of all that, God says in the midst of your captivity, I'm going to bless you. Not that you can be diminished, but I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to give to your bosom. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to press down, shaking together that you're running over. That you are living a life of peace. Stand with me here today. As David began to give a cry of praise unto the Lord, sometimes in the midst of of those captive moments, praise is all it takes to rise up. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, and he returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. But happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein it is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. I wonder in the midst of your prison cell today, wherever it is that you're at, as you're beginning to contemplate the need of searching for peace, could I tell you that the Lord looked down upon your plight and he says, I have you in my mind. I have a thought of you, the thought of peace. The peace giver is here today. And it's just simply a praise unto his name that he will enter into your life and allow that peace that passeth all understanding still the strives. That while you're in the midst of Babylon, while you're in the midst of the tyranny that's coming against you, know soon that the end will come and it's only what you've done for Christ is going to last. That's why he said live abundantly in this present world. He was telling his people live over joy in this world because I have given you the peace that will conquer that. You know, the world is searching for peace. In fact, the political realms would say it's the best peace deal that's ever been given. Could I tell you and remind you that the Word of God would begin to proclaim that in, the, in that time they will say, peace, peace. The best deal that's ever been around. Beware, because then sudden destruction. We are living in that time. We are living in that hour. I don't know how long God is going to hold back, but his soon return is sure. And only the peace that passeth all understanding can still your heart where you're a captive of this world. 
Because one day soon, as you begin to praise him and to worship him, those jail cells are going to break apart. And you're going to be able to find that hidden treasure. You're going to be able to have that pearl of great price. It's called eternity. You're going to be able to see him for all eons of time. Could I ask you, church, could we come together in a time of prayer and ask God to move upon us here today? Allow his word to minister to us today. God, I'm searching for you. I desire you. Oh, God, I need you. Just use the simple prayer in Jeremiah. When you come to me, pray and magnify me. Search for me. And in the moment that you search for me and that you seek me with all of your heart, I will hearken to you. I will be found. Could I ask you, church, I'm, I'm pleading for you. Make your way to this altar. Find you a place of prayer. Begin to pour your heart out to God. Oh, you need that peace. God can grant that peace. He can deliver that heart. He can minister to that soul.
coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless Sing it to the Lord today. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray in fact. Stand with me here today. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we dismiss, we're going to just, as we pray and dismiss all, I want you to remember your days of fasting this, this coming up week. Praise the Lord. Be in prayer for our outreach. Amen. We desire to see growth in our Sunday school. So that's, that's our main focus uh, we're going to be working on, so trying to get some children to come to Sunday school. And some of you may be called upon to help us take care of those children when they come. So please uh, be willing to work. We, we may have some here that will need your attention. So we're just going to work for the Lord this year. Pray God will just have his way in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your peace, your glory, your might. As it moves upon us here today, Lord, I, I pray, God, that we would be that peacemaker to take that peace to those on the outside that don't know you, God, that are looking for peace, wanting to know you. Lord, give us opportunity, open the door for us to meet, to greet, to see, to hear, to talk, to minister. Lord, move upon this church today. I pray for its heart and its mind. I pray your spirit would surround us, watch over us, protect us, bring us back together again to worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Make sure you shake a few hands before you go. Amen. You're dismissed.